Okay, so hey there guys. I want to tell you guys about my makeup look for today. I went out to dinner with one of my friends and then we just went to Barnes & Noble. Of course, what else? But we tried this new um, Spanish restaurant and holy crap, it was so good. So good. We got some margaritas, we got some tacos, we got um, empanadas and they were delicious. Um, so I primed my eyes with the Anastasia eye primer and then I used the Claren the uh, actually the Enchanted Rose lip mask from ColourPop. So I hadn't used it in a little while. And then I set my eyes with the Urban Decay pressed powder. If I look tired, I am I haven't been sleeping. So let's not go to bed at four in the morning tonight. Maybe we could do that, right? Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> And then for my eyeshadow palette, I went into the Midnight Masquerade palette by ColourPop because I was wearing, um, my new-ish Tangled sweater because I ha wasn't able to wear it yet because it hasn't been cold enough, but today it was, like, in the 50s, so now I could finally wear a sweater, and tomorrow's supposed to be pretty cold, too. So I'm wearing like quite a few of my like box lunch things like I wore that tangled sweatshirt yesterday and then I wore the sweater today and I've been wearing my other box lunch hoodie the Sleeping Beauty one like all week and then for Saturday I'm wearing uh, a Beauty and the Beast one to Comic-Con. So I need to get my sleep schedule in order before Comic-Con so I have to go to sleep early tonight, tomorrow night, and Friday night so... Hopefully, we'll get some sleep. Maybe one night, you know? All I need is one night of sleep and I'll be happy. So, I went into the Midnight Masquerade palette because I wanted to use, like, the... How, how many times am I going to dip into this freaking shade every time I open the palette? A million times? Um, Because I wanted to use some of the Tangled shades, obviously, for uh my look. So, I went into Damsel in the Crease. Then I darkened up the crease more with new dream which is one of the rapunzel shades and then quasimodo on the outer corners and then the other rapunzel shade excuse me is um floating lantern and it's like such a beautiful it's just so hard to see some of the shade names because of the gold reflection but it's such a beautiful pressed glitter in this palette some of these pressed glitters in here are so stunning and then i went into mrs potts on the inner quarters because I wanted to wear a little bit of the gold um and yellow from the sweater as well and you know that represents like the the lights in the sky for her too so I'm very literal about some looks um and then I went into brighter days from Len Bunny on the brow bone of course and then I went into the ColourPop uh, cream gel liner in the shade Charmer and then I went into the Essence Lash Primer and then I went into the Lancome Monsieur Big mascara and then I went into the Maybelline Lash Discovery on the bottom lashes and then I primed my face with the um hold on sorry there's like water on my mouse pad um I primed my face with the Tower 28 spray I'm like forgetting because I'm so tired and the elf liquid poreless putty primer and then for my foundation I went into the Dior Skin Glow Forever Foundation, whatever the hell it's called, in the shade 00. They don't even have this anymore, so they reformulate it, like, every freaking year. And then for my, uh, concealer, I went into the Urban Decay Naked Quickie Concealer, and then I set my under eyes with the Pat McGrath Loud Powder, and then I set my face with the Urban Decay Press Powder. I'm actually gonna be happy to be taking a break from makeup on Friday, because, like, my eyes have been bothering me a little bit. They're not bothering me as much now, but I did see that it did crease quite a bit earlier today. So um, I'm obviously going to wear makeup tomorrow to see my other friend. But then on Friday, like I said, I don't really plan to go anywhere. I might go to Target on Friday, but that's about it. Because I do need to return a book and I need to pick up melatonin or something. Because I'm actually running out of sleeping pills as well. So I only have two left. And of course, I run out on Friday. So yeah, we'll see. Um, and then for my bronzer, I forgot where I was in my makeup. 
I went into the House Labs bronzer in the shade Light Level 1. And then for my blush, I went into, excuse me, the Tangled Blush, the Rapunzel one. And this is the shade Floating Lights, so of course I had to use that. And then for my highlight, I went into the Aurora highlighter, um, the shade Coronation, because I thought that was just a really pretty one for it. And then I set my face with the Milk Makeup Setting Spray, and then I set my brows with the Essence Brow Gel. And then for my lips, I went into the MAC Soar Lip Liner. And then for my lipstick, I went into the Sigma Liquid Lipstick in the shade. I don't even... <laughs> Have you ever seen smaller writing in your entire life? I can, like, never read this. I don't even know what it's called. I really cannot see... Awaken? I think it says Awaken. It's just so hard to see it. So that's everything as far as my makeup goes. And as far as a reading update goes, I did finish Immortal Dark by Tyjus Gurma last night. Um, I think I read like 140 pages of it yesterday. And I liked it. I really did enjoy it. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. I just gave it a solid 4 stars. I didn't think I wanted to rate it any higher than that. And I didn't want to rate it lower than that because I still really enjoyed the writing. And it was just a little bit confusing to follow, and the characters were not really distinct enough to di differentiate who was who, honestly. But I really liked the main character, Kidan, and also I freaking love that name. I think it's just great. But I, I was very intrigued by the story, and I just wanted to know more and more about um, Kidan's missing sister June and what was going on with that and who's going to become a vampire and who was going to get killed. So it was a good time. I wasn't entertained and that's all that matters. So and also Immortal Dark pretty much kicked off my um, Halloween TBR for the next two weeks because I wanted to kick off my Halloween TBR pretty much on the 14th of October like right smack in the middle of the month. So I read like the books that I wanted to read in the beginning of the month. Um, but The Boyfriend and Phantasma were also included on my Halloween TBR and then also Immortal Dark. So now I'm on my fourth book for um, my Halloween TBR and that is The God of the Woods by Liz Moore. Um, this is like one of the biggest mystery thriller books right now. Um, so I wanted to see what all the hype was about and I wanted to read this eventually. But dang, this is so freaking long, but at the same time, I'm still intrigued to um, find out what happens, but I keep on feeling like we're getting like way too many breadcrumbs where I just kind of want to find out what happened already because like basically just a bunch of disappearances happen at this one summer camp and you're basically just supposed to figure out who the fuck is taking these kids, <laughs> so... Yeah, um, but it focuses on quite a bit of different characters' perspectives of, like, basically different parents and also some of the children at the summer camp, so it's it's been pretty interesting. I'm on page 221, um, because it's at the start of a new chapter, so obviously that doesn't have page numbers. Um, so I got from 60 to 221, and that's only because I was listening to it more on Spotify Premium, but I did read, like, 70 physical pages today, and I'm, I'm about to go read some more. Um, but even if I get, like, a bit further into this, I'm still gonna have, like, 200 pages to read tomorrow, because I'm gonna try and get up to page, like, maybe, like, 275 or something, but this book is 475 pages. And like sometimes it just puts you off from the length. Like if it's not an epic fantasy book. Or if it's not like. um, Basically like epi epic fantasy books are really like the only books that I feel like that should be longer than like 400 pages. Um, Usually thrillers are shorter than this or at least if this was under 400 pages, I might feel a little bit more motivated, but I'm still liking it, and I don't want to DNF it because I don't DNF books, but also, like, I only DNF books on Kindle if I don't like them, and those are usually, like, books on, like, Kindle Unlimited because that doesn't cost me any money, and I'll just, like, 
you know, start reading another physical book or continue reading the physical book that I'm reading. So I also started Cackle on my Kindle. I forget who it's by, but that was only $5 on Kindle and that's going to be my Comic-Con weekend read. Um, but I started it, so I'm going to continue reading that through the next couple of days and up till Comic-Con, you know, and read this some more tonight. So, but yeah, so far it's interesting. And then um, I'm going to try and binge, I think I said this before, but I'm going to try and, and binge Murder in the Family on Friday. So then that'll be um, one, two, three, four, five... That'll be six books on my Halloween TBR at least. And then the, the rest of October is just going to be my Halloween TBR. So it is freezing in my room. Maybe I'll bring up my space heater because I am fucking cold right now. And I'm going to be freezing my ass off tonight. I feel like there's no heat in my room right now. <laughs> See you. That's it. Bye. Okay, so hey there guys. I want to tell you guys about my makeup look for today. I know I haven't really been wearing my makeup in these looks recently, but I did get home around like 11 because I did go see my friend in Long Beach here. Um, it's about almost 45 minutes away from my house and then I have to drive another. It's less time going home. It's like maybe 10 minutes less. But I always think it's going to take me like 35 minutes, but it always takes me like 45 minutes every time. But we pretty much did everything we wanted to do. Um, we just watched three witchy Halloween movies together. and But they were all like movies that we've seen before. So we just could put them on as background and we, you know, talked the whole time and ate. And he actually ordered us Chinese food, even though he said he was going to make us dinner. But I was like, oh, sure, like fine with me um and the food was really good he got us chicken with garlic uh vegetable fried rice and vegetable dumplings and everything was really good and like the the food was steaming hot it was really good it made me realize how much I miss eating Chinese food because I haven't had Chinese food in a while so I was like <laughs> this was nice so yeah so we had that I might have to leave the house tomorrow though but Tomorrow is the day before Comic-Con. I can't believe Comic-Con is already here. I am so excited. I'm going to be in the city the entire day. Um, hopefully we'll take like an, we usually take like an 8.30 train though. I really don't want to be home past hopefully 10 o'clock. I'm hoping to be home before that, but by the time we get off the train, it'll probably be like 9.30, but it's gonna be such a long day, but I love it. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Um, so yeah, it was great. We watched The Craft and both Hocus Pocus movies, so, um, so now I've done my annual rewatch of Hocus Pocus, because I usually watch that every Halloween. I'm not that person who has to play it every single day, but I like giving it a watch at least once every October. Or so, and then this was now the second time. I'm actually the third time that I've seen the second movie, but I also, I think, I don't know if my friend actually saw the second one last year. I think I possibly just watched it myself. Um, because I don't think we had time to watch it. We might watch it this year, but I already saw it, so it's not like I really have to watch it again. Um, but it's not like we were really paying much attention, but at the same time, like, you know, again, I've seen all these movies, so it wasn't like a huge deal if I didn't. But we're going to watch The Witches of Eastwick next time because we're going to be um, going out for Halloween. So let me stop rambling. So I primed my eyes with the Anastasia eye primer, and then I used the Clarins lip oil, and then I set my eyes with the... Urban Decay Pressed Powder, and then for my eyeshadow palette, I went into the Unearthly Cosmetics Fall Magic Palette. I don't care what anybody says. I think that this is, like, their best palette they've ever done. I've never been inspired to pick up any of their other ones. I think this palette is spectacular, and it's such amazing quality. So, it's like, one. why do I need another palette from them? And also, like, again, I just really haven't been inspired to pick up any eyeshadow palettes the past couple of months. It's like... Again, I really don't have the space to pick up any more eyeshadow palettes. And honestly, 
I really just don't see the the need to overconsume makeup at this point in my life because I have way too many uh I have way too much makeup in every category that it's like ridiculous. I'm actually thinking about doing a huge makeup purge. So anyway, I went into spiced in the crease. Then I darkened up the crease more with earth. And then I used branch on the outer corners. And then I went in with autumn all over the lid. I love this shade. I hadn't used it in a hot second. But I just really wanted to use this palette today because I haven't used it this fall yet. And then I went into cashmere on the inner corners. And it was just so pretty. I really liked how it turned out with the sweater I was wearing. So, like, these two shades are in that uh, sweater. And so is, like, this orange shade. And it was perfect. And then I went in with the, like, goldish shade on the inner corners. And it looked great. So, um, and then I went into Makeup by Mario's liner in the shade, I think, Soft Brown. I can't remember if that's what it's called. Or if it's the other brown one, because I have both of them. It's whatever, I don't even care. <laughs> and then I went into the Essence Lash Primer, and then I went into the Amico Lay Mascara on the top lashes. And then, of course, my Maybelline Lash Discovery on the bottom lashes. And then I primed my face with the Tower 28 Spray and the Elf Liquid Poreless Putty Primer. I'm going to have to get another spray soon, possibly. Did I even haul that? I don't remember if I did. And I don't think I hauled this either because I actually picked this up a while back. But whatever. It doesn't really matter. I'll just include it in my Sephora VIB sale haul. If I even pick up anything. I do think I am going to be picking up a new foundation and a new concealer though. Because I might be getting rid of quite a, fit of, quite a few concealers and foundations. Because I might want to try a new foundation. So I just went into the Glossier one in the shade Very Light, the Stretch Fluid Foundation. And then for my concealer, I went into the Wet n Wild Incognito Concealer in the shade Fair. I love this concealer. And then I went into the Pat McGrath Labs Powder to set my under eyes. And then the Rare Beauty Powder again. I really have been liking this Rare Beauty Powder. I am actually really happy that I picked this up. I probably should have waited till the sale though, but I really wanted to try a new pressed powder. And it's really, really nice. I like it a lot. And then I went into my Gucci bronzer in the shade 01 for my bronzer, which I literally just said. And then I went into the Ofra Cosmetics uh, blush in the shade uh, All I Need Is Love. And then for my highlight, I went into the Odin's Eye highlighter um, in the shade... Uh, let me just open it up in the shade warm sunshine and then I set my face with the um, Milk makeup setting spray obviously and then my brows with the essence brow gel and then for my lips I was trying to go into this color pop lippy stick in the shade who run this but it has completely melted in the tube or Yeah, it, or it got like completely stuck in there but yeah, I can't get it out. I don't know what the fuck happened to it, but like, it's like ruined. I guess it like completely melted. So there's a lip product that I need to declutter anyway. <laughs> but I think I'm going to go through quite a few of lip products as well and declutter like half of them. Out of all the like lip uh, um, makeup products that I feel like I just don't need as many anymore are lip products. There are so many lip products that I have decluttered over the years that it's like, why did I buy so many? But meanwhile, I bought a few in my haul. But like I've, it's so funny because I was just watching Amy Macedo's channel, one of her videos that she just posted. I haven't watched her in a while, but I saw like one of her most recent videos that she um, posted that said, that was about seven makeup products that I wouldn't be caught dead buying anymore. And one of them was liquid lipsticks. And I cannot tell you the last time I actually picked up a liquid lipstick. And I actually don't really wear them as much as I, anymore as I used to. I mean, when I need to go out all day, I will wear them, obviously. But actually, for Comic-Con, I'm going to be wearing one of my Beauty and the Beast lipsticks because I'm wearing my Beauty and the Beast shirt and I'm wearing the entire Beauty and the Beast collection. 
So I'm just so happy. You know, it's so funny that it worked out like that this year for me because that was the the princess collection that they came out with this year for ColourPop. And I just so happened to buy a Beauty and the Beast lounge fly bag last year at Comic-Con. And then I knew I was going to match my bag, but I had no idea that ColourPop was going to be coming out with Beauty and the Beast collection. And then I just so happened to be able to wear it to it. So I think every year I've worn a ColourPop palette to Comic-Con. The first year I wore um, my Star Wars palette because I wore my R2-D2 dress and it looks so good. And then the second, the like full Star Wars one, not the nine pans, but like the classic Star Wars one. I love that palette. And then the second year I wore my Midnight Masquerade palette and I think I mixed, I think it was just the Midnight Masquerade palette. Yeah. I think I just wore that and it was perfect. And then this year I'm wearing the Beauty and the Beast palette. So it's absolutely perfect. Like what could be better? And then I went into the Glam Light Frosted Flake lip liner. I don't even remember what this shade is called, but this is a good lip liner. I haven't used it in a hot second. And then for my lippy, since I couldn't use the Who Run This shade, I went into the Odin's Eye Liquid Lipstick in the shade Apricot Girl. So that's everything as far as my makeup goes. And as far as a reading update goes, I'm still reading The Cut of the Woods. This book is so unnecessarily long, but I'm still enjoying it. Like, I'm still very intrigued. I'm actually at the... At the very last chunk of this I'm on page 418 and this book is 475 pages so I hopefully will be able to finish this tonight I only have 58 pages left but um I don't know if I said this yesterday but I would not call this a thriller this is much more of like a murder mystery not well even though they thought that there was a serial killer that was killing all these kids but these kids have been disappearing and they finally got to the point where they find a body. So, but it took this long to get there. <laughs> but it's it's been very interesting following the different characters. At one point, I was a little confused, but mostly like she has, she's very good at distincting each character as being a different character. And that's what I find very good about her writing because like in Immortal Dark I felt the opposite. I felt like the characters weren't distinct enough to be able to tell them apart or to make them stand out. Like not Kidon and the other male uh, Senos I think his name is. Obviously you remembered them because they were the two main characters. I'm talking about like the other characters in the book. They weren't distinct enough to really like remember but in this, since it's, like, from a different character's POV every chapter, like, Judea, Judita, whatever her name is, I don't know, really know how to say it, um, and it's in a different, like, um, but she doesn't bounce around with the years too much, it's, like, either August 1975, like, July 1975, or, like, 1961, like, back with, like, the past of, like, the mother of one of the disappearing appearing children and she's one of the like main characters like it's pretty like she's the main character of this story pretty much but it takes place from multiple different like females point of views back in 1975 and it was a lot different than for women like in the 60s and 70s and I really do appreciate that in this book as well but also again I don't know why this is so popular with being such a long thriller but again, it's not really a thriller. I mean, there are some thriller aspects in this, but nothing where I'm like on the edge of my seat. But every time she, you know, she leaves like a breadcrumb or like a cliffhanger on the end of a chapter. And then we go into another different character's point of view after that. And then we go back to this character like 10 pages later. Sometimes I'll like forget <laughs> that we were left off on a cliffhanger because like sometimes it'll be like 20 pages and then we'll get back do that cliffhanger and I was like oh I forgot <laughs> so I think I said that yesterday but yeah I am really enjoying it though so we will see what happens and I will update you guys in my reading tomorrow actually not until Saturday because I'm not wearing makeup tomorrow so yeah I will see you guys on Saturday so bye Okay, so hey there guys. I just wanted to tell you guys about my makeup look for yesterday because 
I did tell you guys that I was not going to be wearing makeup the day before Comic-Con, so yesterday was Comic-Con, and it was such an amazing time. We always have so much fun, but I can't believe how fast it goes. We actually ended up missing our first train, and we were so fucking pissed. We were running down the stairs, and the train came in two minutes early, and they left at the exact time that they're supposed to get into the train station. That was such bullshit. I'm like, it was already two minutes early. It could have waited like an extra minute. If it waited one more minute, we would have made that train. So we had to wait until the 1115 train. So we didn't get to Comic-Con until like 1245. But honestly, it's not a huge deal because we stayed a good like six and a half hours. And we mostly went to all of the stands that we wanted to go to last year. And also, I found so much bookish merch. And I'm going to be wearing all that shit for the next, like, three weeks. I'm already wearing this um, fourth wing sweatshirt that I got yesterday. It's, it says, Best Guy of War College. And this is, like, so freaking soft. I bought four t-shirts from that stand and this. And I absolutely love it. I think it's so comfy. That's mostly where I found my bookish apparel. And then I did find one other sweatshirt on another stand that had some really, really cute stuff. Um, and then I bought a ton of bookmarks. I bought my lounge fly bag. This is the bag that I bought. I love it. I'm so obsessed with it. I bought the Aladdin one that I finally wanted. <laughs> how cute it is! I can't get over how cute this is. And this is going to be my bag for the next year. I'm going to be using this every day. I used the Beauty and the Beast one mostly the entire year last year, uh, for the rest of the year last year when I got it, and most of this year. I really haven't used too many other bags this year. Maybe my two Lucky bags, and that's about it. I mostly have been using the Beauty and the Beast one pretty much 80% of this year. So I'm so excited to use this. It's so fucking cute. I love it. And then this is the back with Jafar and Iago and the genie and the um, Abu. Aladdin's one of my all-time favorite Disney movies. Um, so now, probably after this, next year I'm probably going to wear, I'm probably going to get the Mulan one because I love the, the Mulan one. It's so cute and I really want to get the Hercules one because... Hercules is one of my all-time favorite Disney movies. So, like, basically my top five are Sleeping Beauty, Mulan, Aladdin, Hercules, and Beauty and the Beast. So, as long as I get all five of those bags, then I'm good. So, I have a Sleeping Beauty one, I have Beauty and the Beast, and I have Aladdin now. So, now I just need Hercules and Mulan. And then I think after that I might stop, but we'll see. But then I'll have, like, five bags at that point. But I always just end up getting a lounge fly bag at comic-con because it's always like my one souvenir that i love to get so anyway let's get into what i wore yesterday so i pretty much wore the entire beauty and the beast collection yesterday um because i wore my beauty and the beast sweatshirt and i actually got quite a few compliments on it so it was awesome i always end up getting co compliments on like any disney stuff that i wear but so many people really liked it and i was like no oh, thanks i love you like i mostly just got comments on the sweatshirt but i did get one or two compliments on the backpack that i had because i obviously was matching my beauty and the beast one so i wore the entire color pop beauty and the beast collection i love how this worked out so well for me because one i matched the the packaging and everything but also I, it's so funny that this was the one Disney princess collection that ColourPop came out with this year, and this was the one I so happened to, uh, buy this year, and also I knew I was gonna match Beauty and the Beast this year for Comic-Con, so I had the sweatshirt, the bag, and also I was wearing the whole collection from ColourPop, so it just worked out so well. Um, I don't know what collection they're gonna do next year, but hopefully it'll be Sleeping Beauty or Aladdin. If if they did an Aladdin collection, that would be amazing. So anyway, I went into the Anastasia Eye Primer, and then I used the Clarence Lip Oil. I actually I used the Beauty and the Beast um, lip mask, and then again, oh my god, can I speak? I'm so tired from yesterday. And then I set my eyes with the Urban Decay Pressed Powder, and then for my eyeshadow palette, like I said, I went into the Beauty and the Beast one. And I wanted to do kind of a softer look, but it, it went really well. And it actually lasted a pretty long time yesterday, which was nice. 
it didn't really wear off because my eyes really weren't that watery and honestly my nose wasn't really running either I don't know if that's TMI but it was it's so well ventilated in there that honestly like I didn't feel like super nasally so I went into ballroom ballroom dance in the crease if I could freaking speak then I went into break the curse to define the crease and then for the outer corners I used west wing and then for the lid I went into bell and then for the inner corners I went into inner beauty and that's everything I used and it looked really pretty it went so well with the sweatshirt and then I went into brighter days from blend money on the brow bone and then I just went into the makeup by mario liner in the shade the perfect brown it's called the perfect brown finally figured out the name of it and then I went into the essence lash primer and then I went into the Lancome Monsieur Big and then the um Maybelline lash discovery on the bottom lashes and then I primed my face with the Tower 28 spray and the elf liquid poreless putty primer and then for my foundation I went into the Lancome foundation of course the Taint Idol ultra wear in the shade um 120 and I always go into this one um for long days and events and then for the concealer I went into the Urban Decay Naked Quickie concealer and then I set my under eyes with Pat McGrath Labs powder and then I set my face with the Urban Decay pressed powder and then for my bronzer I went into the Pat McGrath Labs bronzer in the shade Naked Desire and then I went into um the blush and the highlight I went into the um Mrs. Potts blush which I love it's just so beautiful it's just a really pretty like pinkish one um and then for my highlight I went into the of course the highlighter from the collection which is called special guests it's just it's so great how all of this worked out like seriously um and I love it this is such a stunning highlighter and then I set my face with the um uh, milk makeup setting spray and then I set my brows with the elf wow brow and then for my lips I went into the mac lip pencil in the shade sore and then for my lipstick I went into the bell lip duo because I had to duh so I went into the lipstick I don't remember what the names of these are the names have like completely wore off so I'm not sure what the name of the lipstick is it's on the lip duo um I don't remember what this is called, but the lip gloss is called Bookworms. It's so perfect for me. I love how I also went into um, Belle as a theme this year because this is when I, the year I became absolutely obsessed with books. So Belle is like the one, <laughs> the one princess that's absolutely obsessed with books. So it just works out perfectly for me. Um, so that's everything as far as my makeup goes and as far as a reading update goes I've just been reading my kindle again this weekend don't kill me it's my life who cares um and for my book that I picked as like, like just a quick read to week to read this weekend I cannot fucking speak um I read Rachel Harrison's cackle on my kindle I actually finished this this afternoon because I just could not stay up to finish it last night. But I read like probably 60 to 70 pages of this yesterday. So I still read a decent amount. But I just knew I wasn't going to read that much yesterday. But I did read on the train there and on the train home. And I got up to page like 270 something. And then I just banged out the last like not even 20 pages this morning. Because I just read like five pages last night and then I was like falling asleep because I was just too tired and I thought this was really good it was a really fun time um and I gave it four stars I thought it was really good um so now I'm reading let me just show you guys I it was so in a Frida McFadden mood still I don't know why this month but now I'm into Frida McFadden's The Teacher and again I am reading this on my Kindle um, and I started this just like an hour ago, so I'm only on page like 22, so I'm about to go read for a little while, and then I'm going to go to my friend's house again, the same person that I went to Comic-Con with yesterday, and I also met my friend Becca there, so it was just us yesterday, and it was just a great time, um, and we're going to go play the new Mario game the new Mario Party game, and we're so fucking excited, so we're just gonna be playing that, like, 
tonight. I'm probably not going to come over until like 5 though. Like I'm probably going to leave by like a little bit after 4.30. And I told him I probably wasn't going to come over until like 5 o'clock. So maybe we'll order food. I'm not really sure. So I'll probably just order food. Um, I just want to pick it. I wanted to get to delivered. I don't want to go anywhere to pick it up. Because I did drive yesterday, and then I have to drive back to him again today. And then we're just going to play it. So, yeah, that's it. Bye. I'm too tired to so buy. Okay, so, hey there, guys. Just want to tell you guys about my makeup look for today. It's pretty late, so I'm just going to do this really quickly. I just went over to my best friend's house. So we could play the new Mario Party party game, and it was freaking awesome. I loved it. So I primed my eyes with the Anastasia Eye Primer, and then I used the Beauty and the Beast uh, Bell Lip Mask, Enchanted, Enchanted Rose Lip Mask. And then I set my face with the, um, oh, what did I use? <laughs> the Urban Decay Press Powder. I'm so fucking tired. It's really late. Um... Excuse me. And then we ordered a uh, wing stop for dinner. It was so good. And then for my eyeshadow palette, I went into the Harry Potter palette because I wanted to use a few shades in this because I wore the bookish um, sweatshirt that I got um, from Comic-Con. So it had like every single color in here that I wanted to wear with it and it worked so perfectly. It actually looked really good. I really liked it even though I was like sitting in the dark playing the game with them. So I went into pumpkin juice in the crease then I darkened the crease more with Gryffindor and then I used Slytherin on the outer corners and this shade is deep enough that it shows up so green on the outer corners it just looks so good I love this palette so much um I don't support JK Rowling but I freaking love this palette um and then I went into Hungarian Horntail on the lid it's so gorgeous and then I went into Gillyweed on the inner corners, and I loved how it turned out. So I incorporated some of the green and a little bit of the orange and the red, and that was like some of the colors of the books on the sweatshirt, and it just looks so good. I really like how it turned out. Um, sorry, just wanted to move that. Of course, I'm completely covering up the camera. I'm also wearing another one of the shirts that I bought yesterday, the fourth wing one. It says, a dragon without its rider is a tragedy. A rider without their dragon is dead. So I bought that one too. I'm just working through all the merch that I bought. Um, and then I went into the Makeup by Mario liner in the shade The Perfect Brown again. And then I went into the Essence Lash Primer. And then I just went into uh, the Amicole Mascara on the top lashes. And then the Maybelline Lash Discovery on the bottom lashes and then I prime my face with the um Tower 28 spray and the um elf liquid poreless putty no yes the elf liquid poreless putty primer and I use this because it's a book so but also it had the perfect shades for me um for that sweatshirt so it just worked out perfectly and then I went in with the Cali Ray Free dreaming skin wellness diffusing <laughs> shade the wide. And then I went into the Kofi concealer in the shade Bad Badum. And then I set my under eyes with Pat McGrath Labs powder. And then I set my face with the um, Rare Beauty powder. And then for my bronzer, I went into the... I forgot what I used for a second. Um, the Makeup by Mario bronzer in the shade Very Light. And then for my blush, I went into the Mulan blush uh, in the shade Good Luck Charm just because I really wanted to use it today. I haven't used it in a little while. And then for my highlight, since I used the uh, Aladdin bag for the first time today, I wanted to go into my older MAC Aladdin highlighter in the shade Always One Jump Ahead such a beautiful one and I love the genie um imprint I haven't used that in a hot second and it looked so beautiful I always forget how much I love the mac um products they're just so good especially their highlighters I love this bag literally so much I'm obsessed with it and then I set my face with the milk makeup setting spray and I set my brows with the 
um, Elf Wow Brow. And then for my lips, I just went into the Coinciding Mulan Lipstick just because I was too lazy to find another one in the shade Hua Mulan. So that's everything I used as far as my makeup goes. And then as far as reading update goes, I am reading uh, Frida McFadden's The Teacher. I'm on page 84, so I got a little bit further into it. And now I'm just going to read because it's like 2 a.m. right now. So yeah, I'm going to go because I'm tired. So bye. Okay, so hey there, guys. I just wanted to tell you guys about my makeup look for yesterday. I don't think I'll be wearing makeup and I don't think I'm going to be going anywhere today. I'm just so tired and I just need a day to recover from this weekend. I didn't really get to rest after Comic-Con. I mean, I rested for a little bit on Sunday and read during the day, but right now I'm pretty tired. So I primed my eyes with the, I just worked yesterday. So I primed my eyes with the Anastasia eye primer and then I used the I don't think I actually used a lip oil because I was eating a snack while I was getting ready. So I just set my eyes with the Rare Beauty powder. It's just too bright right now. Way too bright. And then for my eyeshadow palette, I went... Why am I putting this here? I went into my ColourPop So Jaded palette again because I really wanted to use it again today. I mean, for work yesterday. <laughs> Um, and I went into a few shades from this. I do notice that this palette is just not as good as it used to be because it is pretty old. So maybe I should stop using it, but it still performs really well. So I went into Geodude in the crease. Then I darkened up the crease more with Garnet. And then I used, um, Stone on the outer corners. And then I went into Ruby all over the lid. And then I used... I don't even remember if I used my precious, but I think I did on the brow bone. And then for the inner corners, I used sunstone because I wanted to use that little bit of peach. And it looked pretty. So, still, palette's still kicking. And then I went into the Makeup by Mario liner in the shade The Perfect Brown. And then I went into the Essence Lash Primer. And then I went into... I think the Amicole mascara, I can't remember which one. Um, and then I went into the Maybelline Lash Discovery on the bottom lashes. Sorry. Or the Lancome Monster Big, I don't remember. And then I primed my eyes with the Tara 28 spray and the e.l.f. Liquid Poreless Putty Primer. And then I went into the Makeup by Mario Foundation in the shade Surreal Skin Foundation in the shade 1C. And then I went into the Coinciding Concealer in the shade uh, 120. And then I set my face with the... Oh my god. What the hell? It's getting like crap everywhere. I went into... Oh my god, the Rare Beauty Powder to set my face, the Pat McGrath Labs Powder to set my under eyes. And then for my bronzer, I just went into the House Labs Bronzer in the shade Light Level 1. I didn't realize I went into all House Labs products for my bronzer, blush, and highlight. But then I went into the House Labs uh, Cheek Duo, um, the blush and highlighter duo in Head Rush. This is not even available anymore, but... I used to rave about how good these are, and I still really love them. This was part of her old line, and I went into the shade Flirt for my blush, and then I went into the Highlight Fling for my highlighter, and it just, they both looked so pretty. I really love these, and like I said, these were super underrated when they came out, but also she was, like, limiting her audience when they were only available on Amazon, so... And then I set my face with the um, Milk Makeup Setting Spray. And then I set my brows with the Elf Wow Brow. And then for my lips. Oh my god. If only I could open this like a normal person. Oh my god. Everything is such a challenge for me. I went into the 
Rare Beauty Lippy, the tinted lip oil in the shade Joy, because I haven't used this in a hot second and I wanted to use it yesterday. Also, I don't know why she called these lip oils. Everybody's like, why is it called a lip oil? It's not a lip oil. This is like a lip tint, so they should have just been called, called lip tints. I hope she comes out with actual lip oils soon. Maybe she'll call those lip tints instead. <laughs> So that's everything as far as my makeup goes. And as far as a reading update goes, I only have 10 more days to read <laughs> books. So, but I did finish The Teacher by Frida McFadden um, just now because I was supposed to finish it yesterday, but I did read like over 200 pages yesterday and I was just falling asleep by the time I wanted to finish this. I only had like 40 minutes left, but I started falling asleep after like 15 minutes in and I'm like, I have to go to sleep. So I just finished it this afternoon and I gave this like a 3.5 out of 5 stars. But again, this is not um, a bad book. It's really not. Um, again, I'm still having a really, really good reading month, so I liked it, but it's kind of like my, one of my least favorite Freedom McFadden books, but I just wanted to read a Freedom McFadden book. That's just what I was in the mood for, and now I can scratch off another Freedom McFadden book off of my, um, off of her backlist. I think I've read at least six of her books. Um, wait, hold on. Let me mark it as red first, and then I will return it to Kindle Unlimited. For some reason, I thought I had a little bit more time to, uh, finish, like, six more books, but I think I'm only going to be able to finish five, which is still great. That still means I'm going to meet my goal. It's still going to be 16 books, but right now I'm in the mood for another thriller because I really just want to see if I can find a good thriller to read. Um, and again, I, I'm just going to be reading my Halloween TBR now, even though I should have started that way earlier. Yeah, I only have 10 more days, so... I'm only going to be able to finish five more books, but I'm also going to try and binge this book today because honestly, this book, it doesn't really have full pages. It's more so all in like interview format. So I don't think this will really take me that long. It's all like in script form of like an interview for a murder. And that is Murder in the Family by Kara Hunter. I'm just going to start reading this book now and see how far I get, but I honestly don't think it's going to take me that long. Um, I mean, it is like 450 pages, but again, it's not really like that long. So we'll see if I like it and we'll see how far I get today because again, I'm really not going to be doing anything else today. I really just want to read. I'll do some laundry and then hopefully edit my other video and make some doctor's appointments and that's about it so yeah i'm gonna go bye okay so hey there guys so i just want to tell you guys about my makeup look for today i actually didn't wear any makeup yesterday because like i said i just wanted like a, a day um so and i actually didn't go anywhere yesterday so this is like the first time i'm gonna be leaving my house since like monday night because after i worked on monday I was like, I am just so tired. I just don't want to go anywhere yesterday. I wanted to save some money. And also, like, I have, like, a few things coming up anyway for the rest of the week that um, I just didn't feel like going anywhere. So, I just felt like reading a lot. And um, I made significant progress with the book I'm reading. So, I, I am going to be seeing my boyfriend soon. It's, like, the first time I'm seeing him in, like, a while. So, because he's been working a lot. So, it is what it is. I just wore my Valoris Akatar shirt that I got from Comic-Con and I'm just wearing leggings. I just want to be really comfy. So yeah, I primed my eyes with the ColourPop Party Proof Primer and then I used, um, I don't, actually no, 
I did not do that. I went in with my tinted moisturizer first because I wasn't sure if I was going to have time to do eyeshadow, but then I just threw on some single shadows. So I just went into my Tarte 28 SOS spray and then my Say Star Glow Super Gel Primer. And then for my tinted moisturizer, I just went into the color Pop Pretty Fresh Hydrolonic Acid Tinted Moisturizer in the shade Fair 1N. And then for my concealer, I went into the Kofi Concealer in the shade Bad Batum. And then I set my under eyes with the House Labs powder and also my eyes because I went in with concealer as my primer. And then I set my face with the Rare Beauty powder, which again, I really have been loving. And then for my eyeshadow, I just went into a couple of single shadows. I've been doing that a little bit more often now where, well, I mean, this is only the second time I've been doing it. But if like I just don't feel like grabbing an eyeshadow palette and if I'm kind of in a hurry, I'll just grab from my wide selection of single shadows now and just throw a couple of those on. So I just went into, I believe this is Makeup Geek's Tan Lines. Yeah, it's called Tan Lines. So I just threw that in the crease. And then for my lid, I just went into a MAC single shadow and this is all that glitters. And then I went into this shade from Anastasia Beverly Hills. What shade is this? Um, oh no, that's not. Anastasia Beverly Hills. That is ColourPop. I thought that was Anastasia Beverly Hills for some reason. I'm getting eyeshadow all over my finger. Um, it's called Locked and Loaded, so I went with that on the brow bone. It's a little bit yellow, but it fades enough or blends in enough to my skin that it's like not even noticeable that it's that yellow. And then for my inner corners, I went into Shimma Shimma by Makeup Geek, which is one of my all-time favorite inner corner highlights. It's just such a stunning shade. Um, I think out of all of these single shadows, Makeup Geek are definitely the ones that hold up the best. I think that they're just really fantastic quality. Um, they are a little bit more expensive, I feel like, even though they're $5 a pop. Like I said, I stopped buying single shadows quite a while back because I just found that I was not using them enough to justify spending money on single shadows because once I started buying eyeshadow palettes, I never went back to buying single shadows and I accumulated such a good collection of neutral shadows by that point of single shadows that I'm like, I don't need to buy anymore. So I have like literally every single shade that I needed. And then for my liner, I went into the Makeup Forever liner in the shade Limitless Brown. And then I went into my ColourPop Lengthening Mascara on the top and bottom lashes. And then for my bronzer, sorry, just I'm annoyed that I got eyeshadow on my fingers. Um, for my bronzer, I went into the Milani bronzer in the shade Dolce. And then for my blush, I just went into my single blush is just going to be so annoying to grab. So I just went into Lunar Has It by ColourPop and Kathleen Lates. It's just like one of my everyday shades that I wear all the time. And then for my highlight, which again is going to be such a pain to grab. Oh my god, my stupid Siri just not stop going off. Oh my god. I keep on like brushing the speaker, but... This like keeps on falling down and then for my highlight I just went into the Blend Bunny Forget Me Not palette and I just went into, oh my god, let's not have, I went into the shade Magical which is this gold one. I can't hold it up because I'm about to like drop like highlighter all over me if I do that because one of them is kind of crumbling a little bit probably because it keeps on sliding. Hold on. Um, and then, uh, I just set my face with my Tower 28 spray, and then I set my brows with the Essence Brow Gel, and then for my lips, I just went into the Glossier Lippy again. Um, this is the shade Trench, which is the hydrating, I swear I can never read these, hydrating shine color in the shade trench and I really do love this one it's so pretty I love how glowy they are so that's everything as far as my makeup goes and then as far as reading update goes I did finish the teacher by Frida McFadden yesterday I only had like 15 pages left I was just so sleepy on Sunday night and also I was still recovering from comic-con on Sunday um or maybe it was 
I think I read a lot of it on Monday, actually. Yeah, I read like a hundred pages of it on Sunday. I didn't really have a heavy reading weekend because I had Comic-Con. So like Comic-Con, I only finished Cackle on that weekend, but I finished that like Sunday afternoon because again, I was so tired to finish it on Saturday night. I had a feeling I wasn't going to be able to because I was at Comic-Con all day Saturday. But then I had like 20 pages of that to finish on Sunday afternoon. So I just finished that. And then I went into the teacher and I read like 100 pages of it, like I said. And then that was it. Again, not a very heavy reading weekend, Saturday and Sunday. So I might have lost a little bit of reading time then. But at the same time, at least I read two Kindle reads. So it's just faster to finish them that way. And then I read The Teacher all day on Monday. I don't even remember what I did on Monday. Oh, yeah, I worked. And I read, like, over 200 pages of it on Monday. And then I just finished it Tuesday afternoon. Again, I only had, like, 15 to 20 pages left. And then only I only had, like, 25 minutes left in the book. So I just banged it out. Um, and I liked it. It wasn't that good. Like, honestly, this was probably my least favorite Frida McFadden book besides... I think it's still better than The Housemaid is Watching, though. That's still my most disappointing book from Frida McFadden for me. But this one was okay. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Usually, I don't rate Frida McFadden's books lower than, like, a 3 because they're still, like, a fun, entertaining, fast-paced, silly, goofy time. So, I still had fun with it. But honestly, like, the thrillers that I've been picking lately have just not been hitting like, I just have not picked thrillers that I really have been sucked into and I'm, like, on the edge of my seat and I'm, like, what is going to happen? I felt like the teacher kind of fell a little bit flat for me. Also, I felt that I predicted a lot of what was going to happen before it even happened, like, a couple pages before. I'm, like, okay, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. And no one actually truly got killed in this book. Actually, no one got killed. And that's what I feel like was the most disappointing. Um, but I do like that edge of suspense where it's like, oh, this person's going to die, but then they don't. So it's a little bit fun. But also, I felt like this one had a lot of plot holes and a lot of loose ends that were just not resolved at the end. And I'm just like, okay... They live happily ever after, you know? That was, like, kind of, like, my problem with The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. Um, so, it was, again, it was okay. It wasn't my favorite from Miss Frida McFadden, but I'm still going to be working on reading most of her backlist because she's probably my most read author this year besides Sarah J. Moss and Stephanie Garber and Abby Jimenez and Emily Henry. I think they're like my, t and Frida McFadden, they're like my top five most read authors this year. And I think at this point, I've read, I've read The Housemaid Trilogy, I've read One by One, Never Lie, The Boyfriend, and now um, The Teacher. So now I've read seven of her books, and then I did read that little novella. So technically, I've read like seven and a half of her books. I don't know if I'm going to get to any more of her books this year. I might. But I'm not going to read any more of her books this month. Like, I just don't feel like reading another one. But I was in a Freedom McFadden mood. And mostly, I picked this book because it won my Goodreads poll of which Freedom McFadden book should I binge next. And everybody said The Teacher. And I just didn't love it. So it is what it is. It's not a huge deal. But I'm I wanted to read some, I was in the mood to read thrillers this month, and, like, I think that's why I didn't read thrillers for such a why such a long time, like, from, I think from June to all the way till this month, I didn't read one thriller, because I think after The Housemaid is Watching, I don't really know, so anyway, um... Now I'm reading another thriller, but honestly, this one is kind of a little bit slow, and I don't want this to make me not want to read, 
So, but I did read 300 pages of it yesterday because it's a really easy book to read, but not enough is happening for me to be like totally gripped into this plot. So the next book that I'm reading is Murder in the Family by Kara Hunter. I just wanted something fast paced. I wanted something that didn't take too long to read. But the, and like I said, the format is so easy to get through because it's like in an interview kind of format. Um, but so far I'm just not, I feel like there needs to be a little bit more suspense in between the family members in order for me to be more invested in this. But I'm literally on page, like I said, 342 and I'm still like, there's only been like one twist so far, actually like two twists, but nothing that's been like shocking and jaw dropping. Um, but the, there is one interesting story. I mean, there's a couple of interesting storylines in this. It'll probably will come together, but I don't know. I just feel like it's dragging in some points and I'm just like not completely invested in it, but I did read 308 pages yesterday. Today, I've only read like 30 something pages because honestly, I really didn't feel like reading it <laughs> right now. So we'll see where it goes, but also I didn't really have that much time to read before I was supposed to leave originally. I was supposed to leave at um, 12.45, but then he told me to come a little bit later, so I'm going to leave in like 15 minutes, but still like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be about the same rating as the teacher, so... I just, again, wanted something really gripping and thrilling and fast-paced and something that I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, like I have to find out what happens next. And I haven't really read a thriller like that in so long. So, not since Never Lie. Never, Miss Freedom McFadden did, did grip me with that one. And that was my last five-star thriller. So, I've been in quite a rut with thrillers as well. <laughs> Like, I finally broke my rut with romance, but finding a five-star romance this month with thrillers, I don't know. Maybe it's just the ones I'm picking, so hopefully we'll have better luck. I'm gonna go. Bye. Hey, so, hey there, guys. I just want to tell you guys about my super simple makeup look for today. I don't know about you guys, but honestly, I have been enjoying just doing really, really simple, quick, easy, everyday makeup looks. Like, no, I've been really enjoying doing no makeup makeup looks quite a lot recently. Um, it's just because like sometimes I just don't feel like spending so long on my makeup and also like on days where I'm just running errands now, usually this is like my, my look. Liner, mascara, concealer, blush, bronzer, highlight, and a lip product and set my eyes and powder and that's about it. So, it's still, like, using quite a few products, but it's, like, just sometimes I just don't feel like blending eyeshadow anymore. I don't know about you guys. Maybe I'm just a little lazy, but I just find while I'm getting older, I just don't find to blend out my eyeshadow every single day absolutely necessary. I'm already going to be wearing uh, makeup this whole weekend, like, Friday through Sunday because I have plans with friends. That it's like I really don't need to be wearing too much makeup and honestly I might not even bring eyeshadow with me when I go on my trip with my friends. I might just bring like one palette with me to do like a, a quick makeup look on like Saturday morning because that's really the only day I'm going to do like makeup there. Because Friday I'll already have my makeup done while we're like traveling to the house and everything. So anyway... Um, I just went in with concealer today, so I just went into the Kofi Concealer in the shade Bad Bad. Um, again, this is my favorite concealer of all time, so I just use it constantly. Um, and then I just set my under eyes and everything with the House Labs powder, and then I set my face with the Rare Beauty powder, which again, I have been absolutely loving the Rare Beauty powder. I'm so glad I decided to buy that one instead of keeping the Tower 28 one, because I've honestly been loving this one. Um, and then I went into the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in the shade Limitless Brown. And then I just went into the Color Pop Lensing and Mascara on the top and bottom lashes. And then for my bronzer, I just went into the Color Pop Cream Bronzer Stick in the shade Laguna Beach, I believe. Yeah, I hadn't used this in a little while, so I just wanted to use a cream bronzer today. And I really love this product. 
And then for my blush, I actually went into a Makeup Geek blush today. I was going to use a MAC one, but I'm like, I haven't used these ones in a little while. So I just went into the shade Romance. It's like a really pretty, like, more glowy blush, but it's just such a pretty, like, warmer tone blush. It's, I really, really like it. How many times can I say pretty? It's very pretty. And then for my <laughs> highlighter, I just went into this Smashbox and Casey Holmes collab palette. God, when's the last time you guys saw this palette? I don't even watch Casey Holmes anymore, but I really do like using this palette when I can. So I just usually swirl all three shades together, and it really is a pretty highlighting palette. So even though Smashbox is not really that popular anymore, they do make some solid products. And then I set my face with the Tower 28 spray, and then I just set my brows with the Essence Brow Gel. And then for my lips, I just went into the Summer Fridays uh, lip balm in the shade. This is just the clear one. I just went into this because I just wanted to throw it on. And that's it. That's all I did. Super simple, super easy because I'm just going to go get my nails done today because I don't think I've gotten them done since before Comic-Con. That's literally when I got them done last. <laughs> so I need to get them done today. They're kind of growing out too much. Um, and I want to get my Halloween nails done. So this is like the absolute perfect time to do it. I don't know if I'm going to do, I really do want to do like an orange color, but with like a design, but honestly, I was kind of thinking about doing like a purplish light color, not like a lavender, but kind of like a purplish blue almost with like a bat design. I don't know. Or maybe with like a little ghosty, that would be so cute. I might do that. I think that would be adorable. Um, so that's everything as far as my makeup goes, and as far as a reading update goes, I did finish Murder in the Family yesterday. I think I finished it right before, like, midnight because my boyfriend called me and we ended up talking for, like, an hour, but at that point, I only had, like, 20 pages left of it, so I just ended up finishing it really quick, and then I just showered and got ready for bed, and it was okay, honestly. I didn't really love it, um... I just thought the twist towards the end was like kind of stupid and honestly all the twists in that book were just not really anything shocking to me. Like I said, I really feel like the thrillers that I've been reading have just not been hitting. So I've said that every single time I've finished a thriller this month. But like I said, I really did want to read a couple of thrillers in October because I wasn't really sure like when I was going to be able to have the opportunity to read any more this year. Um, so obviously October, like, I wanted to be shocked, and honestly, like, none of these thrillers really did it for me. Honestly, the, the book that was, like, the scariest and, like, one that, like, shocked me a little bit more was Cackle, um, because it's supposed to be, like, a bit frightening, and there was some, like, some suspense in that book that I really liked, like, not anything that I was, like, scared out of my mind, but, like, it was a little bit chilling, but not anything, again, that, like, kept me awake at night. But honestly, like, I really want, like, that feeling. I want to be scared <laughs> by a book. And I haven't been. So, not anything, like, horror. But if you guys have any, like, thriller suggestions on which books would do that, I really did want to read The Silent Patient at some point. That's probably the book that's going to do it for me because that book is so damn popular. Maybe I'll fit that in in November. I don't know. I feel like I'm pushing so many books to November now. I don't know if I'm going to have the time to get to them. I'm like, oh, I'll have time next month for like everything and then I never do. <laughs> so anyway, it was okay. I gave it a three out of five stars. I really didn't feel like bumping it up. So three stars is still a good rating. I, I mostly gave it three stars because I loved the format of it and I did love that it was very fast paced. But honestly, the plot was a little bit weak. Um, but I liked it. Like, there, there wasn't anything about it that I loved, but I liked it. It was, it was just okay. So now I went into my first witchy book, um, for the last few, uh, days of Halloween and October. So, well, of October and for my Halloween TBR. So the next book I went to, went, went to, yes, went into was or is The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. I actually just hit page 100, so I'm already on page 1, 
102. I wanted to at least get 100 pages in before I left. I actually read like 30 pages of it this morning because I just couldn't fall asleep. So I got up to page 50 then and now I'm on page 100. And I am really, really enjoying this so far. I think ex I've never read a quote on a, the front of a book that explains um, a book so well as to how you feel reading this book. And I feel exactly the same way as this person quoted this book. Um, that they said that it made them feel, it said, a warm, it says a warm and witchy hug of a book, and I feel like the warm fuzzies reading this, and it really does feel like a warm hug. I don't know what it is about it. It's like, it feels like such a cozy, witchy book. I don't know. It's just like, I just love, um, and also it's very funny. There's some things that I'm laughing so much at, but it's like, I kind of almost like that subtle kind of humor and that's like exactly in this book and I'm just enjoying it so much. And what's crazy is that also this is like the highest rated witchy book that I'm going to be reading until October is over and then I'm probably not going to read any more witchy books after that and also I'm using my Valaris bookmark that I got from Comic-Con and I love like the quote on it so I'm finally able to use this bookmark. Um, I used the Sarah J Moss one with all her books on it for, uh, Murder in the Family, and now I'm using this one. But yeah, I can see why this is so highly, oh, I was gonna say that this is the most highly rated, um, uh, this is the highest rated witchy book, um, on my TBR for the rest of the month. Um, this one has like a 4.10. The rest of the books, which are like Go Hex Yourself, The X Hex, The Kiss Curse, and The Unbreakable Side Effects of Heartbreak and Magic, they all have under four stars. And I can see why this one is so highly rated. And I'm glad that I started with this one because I wasn't sure if I was going to get to this one this month. And I'm like, there, there was like such a strong urge for me to read this one this month. I was thinking about it like all last week. I'm like, this one is the one I'm going to start with and I'm so happy that I did. It's like you you just got to trust your instincts sometimes. It's like, why do I want to read this book so badly? And then it's like, sometimes you just have a feeling that it's going to be great. So I'm just wearing my fourth wing shirt today and some leggings and I'm going to throw some sneakers on and I'm going to go. So bye.